Let's see how to solve quadratic equations with complex solutions. To do that, we're going to work through the two examples that we see here. So let's get started. The first, we need to solve 2x squared plus 8 equals to 0. And to solve this equation, I start by subtracting 8 from both sides of the equation, which leads us to 2x squared equals to negative 8. Next, I divide both sides of the equation by 2, which leads us to x squared equals to negative 4. Now, at this stage, if we were working within the set of real numbers, we would stop here. Indeed, it's impossible to have a square number which is negative. But if we're working with complex numbers, we can carry on. Indeed, we can now state that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 4. And I can carry on and state that this equals to plus or minus the square root of 4 times negative 1. Now, using the fact that the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b, I can go further and state that this equals to plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And now, using the fact that the square root of negative 1 is equal to i and the square root of 4 is equal to 2, we can state the final answer as x is equal to plus or minus 2i. And we're done. Now, to be clear, we have two solutions here. The first is x equals to negative 2i. The second is x equals to 2i. And it's worth pointing out that these two complex numbers are the complex conjugates of each other. And in fact, when solving quadratic equations with complex solutions, that will always be the case. The two solutions will always be complex conjugates of each other. That being said, let's work through this second example. In this case, we have to solve x squared minus 4x plus 13 equals to 0. Now, in this case, we're dealing with a quadratic of the more general form, meaning we're dealing with ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0, where a equals to 1, b equals to negative 4, and c is equal to 13. When solving such quadratic equations, the first thing we need to do is calculate the discriminant delta. And remember, delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. So using the values we have here, the discriminant delta is negative 4 in parentheses squared minus 4 times 1 times 13. That's equal to 16 minus 4 times 1 times 13, which is 52. And by all means check, but that leads us to delta equals to negative 36. And that's our first step done. Now, you may remember that when we work with real numbers, if ever the discriminant delta is negative, we stop there and state that there are no real solutions. But when working within the set of complex numbers, if delta is negative, then there will be two complex conjugate solutions. So I'll just write that. That's two complex conjugate solutions. And that leads us to our second step, in which we actually calculate the solutions. Well, the formula for the solutions is exactly the same as for real numbers. So that was x equals to negative b plus or minus the square root of delta over 2a. Now replacing b, delta, and a by their respective values leads to x equals to negative negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36, all of which is written over 2a, so that's 2 times 1. That's equal to negative negative 4, which is 4, plus or minus the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1, all of which is written over 2. Notice that to get from the square root of negative 36 to the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1, I've used the result we saw previously. And now using the fact that the square root of negative 1 is i, we can state that this equals to 4, plus or minus the square root of 36, which is 6, times the square root of negative 1, which is i, all of which is written over 2. We now split the real and imaginary part, so that would be 4 over 2, plus or minus 6i over 2. Finally, we state that x is equal to 2 plus or minus 3i. And that's the answer. Once more, we see here that we have two solutions. The first being x equals to 2 minus 3i, and the second being x equals to 2 plus 3i. 
And just as I said previously, we can see that these two complex numbers are the complex conjugates of each other, which remember will always be the case. And there we have it. That's how we can solve quadratic equations with complex solutions. And that's it for this tutorial.